Hello and welcome to P Academy. So in this video, we are going to be looking at the concept of current divider rule. So I'll be explaining what the concept is all about and how you can derive the equation or the expression for current divider rule. Okay. So before we get into it, please, if you are new to P Academy or you are here to subscribe to the channel, please can take our time to click on that subscribe button. It's absolutely free. You see that lower right of your screen um, somewhere here or just anywhere below the video, you are going to see the option to subscribe. So can you take out two seconds to click on that subscribe button? All right, so thank you very much if you have just done that. All right, so now current divider rule. So from the word current divider rule, that means that means there is a current that we are trying to divide. Exactly. And the idea is actually gotten from resistors connected in parallel. Exactly. Now, if you look at the circuit that we have on screen now, you see that we have two resistors. We have the R1 and then we also have R2. That is for resistor 1 and the resistor 2. Now, there is a current in this direction, which is I. That is the total current. Now, when the current goes to this point here, it has to split. That is the idea behind um, uh, resistors connected in parallel. You know, they have to split because in a parallel connected, uh, when resistors are connected in parallel, the current that is flowing through resistor 1 and resistor 2 are actually different. Exactly. The only time when they might be the same thing is uh, when the value of the resistors are the same thing. Exactly. But however, like I said, once it gets to this point, for that of I1 go here, I2 will go here. So now how do we now know that the value of I1 that is flowing towards this direction and the value of I2 flowing towards this direction? Exactly. So that's the idea of current divider rule. Exactly. There's a major current like this, which is I. It got to this point. I1 has to go. I2 has to split themselves. So now, so how do we know what is I1 and I2? Okay. So again, using the idea of current, I mean, of um, resistors connected in, in parallel, we already know that the voltage flowing through this entire circuit is the same thing. The voltage here, that's why we have V here, V here, and V here. They are all the same value. Exactly. So now let's take this um, first resistor, this R1, uh, as the point of reference now. If you are to get the current that is flowing through this resistor R1, so we can also write it as from Ohm's law, So from Ohm's law, we know that V is equals to IR. So we can also say that our I is equals to V over R. Okay. So with that being said, so that means our I1, our I1 will be the voltage across this resistor R1, which is V, divided by the value of the uh, resistance less, which is R1. So that means we are going to be having our I1 is equals to V over R1. However, remember that in this um, circuit that we are having here, we said the value of V here, exactly, is the same value of V here and V here. So let's call, even let's call this V1, V2, and then V3. So that means our V is the same thing as our V1, it's the same thing as our V2, exactly. So, so that means our V, exactly, is equals to IR, is equals to IR where our i is this particular i here, exactly, which is the total i. So let's call that on i subscript t, exactly. And then our r is the equivalent um, resistance of r1 and r2. So that will be r e q, exactly. So now let's establish something here also so that you don't get confused. So we can also write that our V is equals to IT R EQ. So that means the voltage across this particular parallel connected um, resistor is what is I total, which is the total current. So let's call this IT multiplied by the equivalent resistors of these two resistors. Exactly. So let me also write it. I think I wrote it here that okay, not on this one. So that means let's just take note of this for reference purpose that our IT is I1 plus I2. Exactly. Also, our REQ, which is our equivalent, the value of our equivalent resistance when the resistors are connected in parallel. We've derived it in the previous video, is giving us R1, R2 over R1 plus R2. Exactly. So let's take note of what we are having here. 
So if we should come back to this expression that we have here that the current that is flowing through this particular resistor R1. So if you are to calculate it, we've said it is, we've represented it with I1, exactly, and the value is V over R1, exactly, because this is R1, that is the, resist, um, the resistance there, and V is the same thing across, all right. So, so let me rewrite it that our I1 is equal to V over R1. So, so we can say that our I1 is equal to I T R E Q over R1. I hope you get that. So from the expression that we have here. Exactly. So this is also our V. Because it's also the total current times the total equivalent resistance. Okay. So that means our I1 is equals to I total multiplied by. Now this is the value of our R E Q. Our equivalent uh, resistance multiplied by R1 R2 over R1 plus R2 all over R1 exactly but to make it less complicated you can put this in brackets and say divided by R1 exactly all right so now let's continue so that means our I1 will then be I T R1 R2 over R1 plus R2 divided by R1. Okay. So I'm just taking make sure I don't miss any step. So our I1 will be I total, that's the total current multiplied by R1 R2 over R1 plus R2. So this divided by R1, mathematically you can write as times 1 over R1. Exactly. So what we are having here, this is R1 can cancel this R1. Okay. So with that, we are going to be having our I1 is equals to this multiplied by this. So that's what is left. I total R2 over R1 plus R2. So this is the formula that we are going to use to get the current that is flowing through this particular through this particular resistor exactly so so let me analyze it so that means the i1 value is the total current multiplied by the resistance of the second resistor plus the addition of the two resistors exactly so if you go back to the circuit that means the current that is flowing through uh, through this particular resistor here, if you are to get it, you just say that the total current, exactly, which is the IT here, multiply by R2, which is the value of the second um, resistor, divided by the addition of both R1 and R2, exactly. Now, using that same concept, you can also use it to get the value of I2. So we can also say that means our I2 that means the current that is flowing through the second resistor will also be IT multiplied by R1 over R1 plus R2. I hope you are, you are seeing the, the pattern. Exactly. That's the pattern. So what I want you to take as an assignment from this video is try getting IT. This is what you are going to get. But try and solve it following the same step that we use in getting I1. You are going to arrive at this, but solve it to use that to test your understanding from what we've looked at in this particular video. So that's just the idea of current divider rule. So again, the current divider rule is just gotten from the concept of resistors connected in parallel. Exactly. So if, they are, if you are asked to derive the current divider rule, just make sure, just remember this circuit that, okay, it's gotten from resistors connected in parallel. And, and why is that? Because it is when they are connected in parallel, we have to share current. Exactly. That is when we have to share current. And then for that of voltage divider rule, we use resistor connected in series. Because in series connection, voltage, there is a voltage drop. Exactly. There is a voltage drop. So if you can understand those two, uh, those principles or those differences, you might not have too much problem. Exactly. So that's it for current divider rule. I hope you find value in it. Please, if you do, give it a thumbs up. 
you are still here to subscribe please hit on that subscribe button to subscribe so and i'll see you all in the next video where we are going to be talking about voltage divider rule thank you